morning. I'm Susan Waters. I am an occupational therapist here at Evergreen. Thanks again for coming today to the Fall Convention Talk. Um, occupational therapy, I always like to start with what is an occupational therapist in case people have not uh, seen one before. So what we look at is everyday activities. Everything from being able to get up, get dressed, do your grooming activities, household tasks, to being able to get out into the community, um, access whatever you need in the community, driving, shopping, and working. And then we look at your physical skills, your cognitive skills, and your visual skills, and how they relate to those activities. I like to say we dovetail between physical therapy and speech therapy. So today what I'm going to touch on, I'm going to build on what Alicia and Melissa have already talked on, and I'm going to get a little more specific in terms of areas um, that can affect preventing falls. So we're going to look at vision changes, medications, uh, fatigue and pacing, cognitive changes, and then general recommendations for home improvements or home modifications. So we start with vision because we feel strongly that vision really leads function. If your vision changes, your world changes. And as we age, our vision changes. Um, then you add uh, something like diabetes, and you might have diabetic retinopathy. Uh, optic neuritis is often associated with MS. Strokes can cause field cuts. Then general aging diseases like macular degeneration, cataracts, and glaucoma can affect your visual acuity. So hopefully you're having annual eye exams to make sure that at least you're watching for macular degeneration, glaucoma, and cataracts, but um, which, you know can throw your world off. Some of the symptoms that happen from those changes, depth perception, again, depth perception changes again because our visual acuity changes, and the acuity in each eye can change. So how close or how far some, an item is to you, uh, walking down steps, knowing the depth of the steps so you're able to get down there without stumbling. Items at home, like in the kitchen, you know, realizing where the coffee cup is without even really looking, that's something that we just take for granted. But as your vision changes, that can change also. Blurry vision, double vision can be a problem. Contrast sensitivity, this time of year with our short days and rainy days, everything's kind of gray and black out there. So there's no contrast between the street and, and the and, and the wall in front of you or the, the, just the distance in front of you. So everything kind of seems the same. Um, then you add the glare of the lights and the rain. It can make driving out there pretty scary. Peripheral vision, that we see change a lot with people that after they've had a stroke, there's a lot of association and people's peripheral vision is off. They're at a higher risk for falls. Um, and then I've already talked about the visual acuity. So what can you do? Well, um, I'm going to talk about this a couple of times throughout the talk, about look, really looking at the lighting, both inside your house and outside your house. Uh, making sure you have good lighting on the staircases and hallways, using night lights in the bathrooms and bedrooms. Making sure outside, uh, if, you, if you have steps especially, that you have good lighting. So whether it's people visiting you, or yourself going in and out that you can see well. I had a friend recently over the holidays slip outside on her back deck. She was out getting her dog and missed the step. There was no lighting and fractured her foot pretty badly. I had to have two surgeries. So <laughs> it happens to everybody at all ages. And, you know, here she is Christmas Eve, ready to have a grand old time. And it was a pretty bad fall. Contrast. So. Driving, that's a little tricky, hard to add contrast driving. At home, uh, an example uh, at home, like in your bedroom, your sheets, if your um, sheets are white and you're sitting on the edge of the bed trying to get dressed and you're dressing with white t-shirts, it would all blend in. So changing up contrast, like different color sheets or placemats in the kitchen are a couple of good examples of adding contrast to your home. Uh, glare, with glare, using sunglasses, 
uh, lines to cut the glare in your house. We were just talking about um, even using glasses uh, when using your com computer because the glare sometimes or the light from the computer can irritate your eyes. And that kind of irritation to your eyes in any of these situations can add to fatigue. So really being aware of, of how your vision is affecting your everyday activities. Scanning your environment for obstacles both in like familiar and unfamiliar places. So especially if you're going to a house that you're not familiar with or you're out in the community, just slowing down, being aware of any steps, any objects on the floor, any water on the floor that could put you at risk for a fall. And here are some general lighting tips. Um, our lighting world has changed quite a bit in the last couple of years. We're not really using uh, incandescent lights as much. We're using more of the compact fluorescents and the LEDs, which are good because they are brighter in a lot of ways. But sometimes I think they're harsher too. So again, um, you know, looking at the wattage or the lumens. Now we're talking lumens, not wattage as much. The recommendation is 60 to 75 watts or 800 to 1100 lumens in, in your room. So um, when you're going out shopping, knowing that conversion, I'm sure they probably have it on the packages, but uh, just to kind of be aware of that's what, what to look for. Good task light eating in the kitchen and bathroom can make it easier to do things. If you can see it well, again, it's going to help avoid fatigue. The reveal light bulbs and the op lighting are uh, brands that they tout as being more natural type lighting. Because ideally, that is what is easiest to work with, is more natural lighting. So these are two brands that are really good, especially the op lighting if you're doing a lot of near tasks like uh, sewing, needlework, uh, beading crafts. The op lighting is a really great line. And you can get those at my, that line at Michael's and Joann's, and I'm sure online, on Amazon. And then, you know, smart technology. There's a lot going on in that area. Um, I'm, I'm just really learning about it myself, but with uh, Amazon Echo and Alexa, you can get those. Uh, pieces of equipment and come in ho at home, set it up where you can say lights on in kitchen, lights on outside, which is, a, I think, a great safety factor. So there's a lot going on. If you Google that, you'll find a lot of information. Medications. So, again, as we age, unfortunately, we all end up taking some medications. Uh, there is some research that says if you take three or more medications, you're at a higher risk for falls. I think the most important thing with the medications is making sure you're taking them correctly. Um, so using sometimes a Mediset, some sort of pill box that you can really keep track of, of your intake of them, I think can be really helpful and really helps with safety, making sure you're taking the right dosages at the right time. Maybe I think Alicia and Melissa talked a little bit about this also. Filling your prescriptions at the same place, uh, having a pharmacist that you trust that you can talk to that is aware of other medications that you're taking. So in case making sure none of them are going to be a problem and make you a little dizzier, sleepier, uh, confused. So those are the kind of things you always want to watch out for with, uh, with medications. Keeping an updated list, maybe on your refrigerator, so in case there is an emergency or you need to go to the doctor or the urgent care or emergency room, it's a quick pull down and, and take it with you. Cognition. So cognition, when we talk about cognition, we're talking about brain function basically. We kind of throw that word out a lot of times and it's, people aren't really quite sure what that means. So they think of it as memory. But in the area of fall prevention, what we're really looking at is uh, people concentrating, paying attention, focusing on what they're doing, trying to avoid distractions, um, also processing speed. Again, as we age, our processing speed slows down. You'll hear people say, oh, he or she is slowing down. A lot of that is just your ability to process the information coming at you, whether it's verbally or reading, uh, can get more challenging. 
a lot of people speak fast and you need them to repeat things, that's okay. Or you need to write things down, that's okay too. But trying to keep strong in these areas is something that we really encourage. So working on brain exercises, whether it's crossword puzzles, Sudoku, new games, card games, uh, online there's a lot of web-based brain exercises like Comosity and Brain HQ, which is good, um, that address memory, attention, processing speed. Something it's a, as important as keeping the muscles in your body strong, this is the most important muscle in your body, it's your brain. Socializing, they really encourage socializing. That's a great way to work on memory, processing speed, and attention. Having conversations with people, sharing information, current events, and whatnot is a great way to work on your brain's attention focusing. All right, fatigue. So fatigue can play a big role across the board in our everyday lives. Uh, certainly when we're more tired, we're not going to pay attention as well. We're going to be more distracted. Our vision can get blurrier. Uh, depth perception can change. Um, just we'll feel weaker. So being aware of your energy level is, is pretty important. And so just I, I think the first thing is, is just being aware of it. And then uh, pacing yourself. So we really encourage people to stay active throughout the day, but also take rest breaks throughout the day. Our mantra kind of is activity, rest, activity, rest, activity, rest. Sleep, right? That's a really important function in everyday life and to be able to do the things that you want to do. And many people suffer from <laughs> issues with sleeping. Ideally, you want to be sleeping seven to eight hours. I just took a sleep course recently, and what their research was showing is that really after the age of 65, you don't need, you need more like six or seven hours of sleep. You don't necessarily need eight or nine hours of sleep. And I think partially that's because the assumption is you're not working. But if you have other medical issues going on, I think that tends to wear on you more. And fatigue is still, and still needing eight or nine hours of sleep is not unusual. I'm a believer in naps. I think naps are a good thing as long as they don't affect your nighttime sleeping. If you're having a hard time going to sleep or staying asleep, then you do want to look at whether or not that nap is really helping you during the daytime. We have a lot of uh, information on sleep in our clinic, so if that is something that you want to get more information on, you may want to think about coming in and we can help you with that and give you some other resources. And then just breathing. It's so funny how many people come in and we're doing exercises or walking or whatever, and you just kind of like, not breathing. So really thinking about breathing a lot during the day, taking breaks to just work on breathing. <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's, it's really important. And then I'm, I'm now going to move on to uh, home modifications. So the whole reason for looking at home modifications or making sure your home is safe is so that you can continue living there, primarily, I would think, um, that things are easier to do, that it there, it's conserves energy um, in how you're doing things, and that it's you're preventing falls. So what I encourage you to do is to kind of look through each room of your house and look at whether there's clutter and whether that's an issue for maybe tripping over, Looking at your furniture placement, lighting, do you need grab bars placed in the kitchen or in the bathroom or your bedroom, down the hallway? You can put them anywhere you want, really. They're not just meant for the bathroom. Electrical cords, making sure they're not, they're someplace that are easy to access and you won't trip over them. And then, of course, throw rugs and carpeting. So, you start with the bathroom because most falls seem to happen in the bathroom. And some questions you may just want to ask yourself when you go home, or maybe you've already asked yourselves, you know, is the sink, faucets, toilet, is everything accessible? Are you able to get in and out of the bathtub or the shower stall? Are you able to get on and off the toilet safely? Are you, is the, is the sink in the bathroom easy for you to reach? Are you bending over too much? Um, can you reach the drawers? Do you need to move things up? Um, is the bathtub or shower floor slippery? Do you need some sort of non-skid uh, mat or pieces on the, on, in the shower stall? Um, and making sure you don't have area rugs that slide easily. You want at least the non-skid surfaces. 
And here's some examples of setups in the bathroom that can keep you safe. Uh, this one over here, the bathtub clamp, this is great if you have a traditional bathtub. They're really heavy. I don't know if anybody has them at home. So here's, here's an example. It's really heavy. It works great. It goes right onto the edge of the bathtub and you just use it to step in and out. It's a great little device. Grab bars. <clears throat> this is a great setup for the grab bars and you get the handheld shower, the shower faucet. So even if, whether you were standing or sitting, It'd be easy to access. Different types of seats for the bathtub. This is a transfer bench, so two legs outside, two legs inside. So if you do, if you're not able to step into it, you can sit on the edge and just slide over. This is your traditional shower seat that probably lots of people have seen. That can go either in the bathtub or a shower stall. Here's some examples for around the toilet. Um, you got your traditional raised uh, toilet seat up here on the top, which is good. This is a Versa frame, which actually hooks onto the back of the toilet, which is really nice because if you don't, if it's, especially if you have a raised commode already, this works out really well and not quite as cumbersome as something like the three-in-one, which fits over the toilet seat. It can also go in the shower stall a shower stall, and it could go next to your bed. So uh, three good choices if you need a little boost or help around the toilet. So some of these things we've already touched on, you know, avoiding the slipping in the bathroom I think is key because you usually have tile. Um, it's really easy to slip on that, whether, especially if you have socks on or no, no socks, just bare feet. So really kind of being aware of that, make sure the lighting is good. The high toilets make it really easy to get on and off. They won't even need a raised seat. And looking at night lights, so if you do get up in the middle of the night, you have some good lighting. In the bedroom, same kind of thing. Looking at your lighting, reducing clutter, uh, making sure you don't have too much furniture that you're able to get in and out of your bed into the bathroom if you're using walkers, that you're able to access to the uh, bathroom as easily as possible. My father-in-law, they, they moved in from their own home into assisted living or independent living and they had to bring all the dressers with them. And for him to get from his side of the bed to the bathroom makes me really nervous. And here I give this talk and I'm like, Bob, you got too much furniture in here. You got to get rid of something. I'm not getting rid of anything. I'm like, okay, I'm, yeah, it's, it's hard for him to use like a walker to get through, but he insists upon it. So here's an example of a bedroom that I think looks pretty good uh, because there's no clutter, uh, there's no rugs to get in the way. Um, it'd be pretty easy, especially on this side, to, the bathroom was over here to get right to it, uh, to get in and out, and the lighting looks good. Kitchen. Uh, another area that we spend a lot of time in, another area that can, that can cause distractions and, and cause falls. So I think number one is keeping things up high so you don't have to bend over too much to reach items. Um, making sure you don't have area rugs that you can trip over. Watching for spills in the kitchen. And just watching for distractions, you know, not putting something on the stove and forgetting about it and going into another room. Um, and just not trying to do too many things at one time that you can get yourself tripped up. Kitchens can be also uh, popular spots for pets, so you want to make sure that maybe your pet stays outside of the kitchen. <clears throat> Unlike mine that likes to come in and vacuum the floor for me, or the minute something drops on the floor, he's in there. Amazing there, hearing. Good lighting, of course, is always helpful. Here's a couple of examples of how to simplify it so you don't have to bend over as much. There's a lot of products out there uh, that you can transfer your, transform your cabinets into more pull-out shelves to make it easier to access. This is a perching chair. This is over in our clinic. Um, a great tool for the kitchen if you want to get in there, yet you do get tired or your legs are weak. Something to sit on, safer than just a bar stool. 
Stairways, they can be an area for high falls also. Um, I think being, being aware again, being conscious when you're going up and down the stairs, maybe holding on to the railing, not uncommon that you know, you're going down the stairs and you're thinking about something up ahead and you miss that last step and that can cause a fall. Um, lighting, making sure lighting's good, making sure there's not too much clutter on your staircases um, so that doesn't trip you up. You can use uh, reflective or contrast strips so you have a little bit of contrast and you can see it better. Making sure there's lights, at, a light switch at the top of the staircase and the bottom of the staircase in case you get up in the middle of the night and need to go downstairs. Living rooms. Um, I think the big thing here again is just accessibility. Making sure you, if you're using some sort of assistive device that you're able to get around you into the furniture easily. That you're not going to trip on anything. Carpeting, making sure the carpeting is not too high pile, a lower pile. Carpeting I think is easier, especially again with assistive devices. This is an example of not an ideal uh, living room. Uh, the glass table here would make it difficult. There's just a lot of, a lot of stuff around the room. These are pictures of something a little more ideal, except I can't, I can't find anything without coffee tables. <laughs> Because that's realistic, right? Or, or it looks good. But you really probably like moving this piece over here so that you could easily access it. I would just make sure, too, if you had a rug like this, that it's fairly secured. Uh, the lighting is good. But again, same thing over here. Too much uh, with the carpeting and the, and the coffee table. But I liked the lighting. And then lastly, looking at assistive devices uh, to make it easier for you to get dressed, put your shoes on. I brought some over here on the side table in the bathroom uh, using a long handle sponge so you don't have to bend over. Uh, there are sock aids, long handle shoe horns, all make it easier for you to get dressed. And that was one thing too I meant to mention, like in, in the bedroom, having an armchair instead of sitting on the edge of the bed, because I've had patients that slide off the bed. So, um, you know, maybe if you're having challenges with your balance, or you have some leg weakness or trunk weakness, sitting in a chair and putting on your clothes would be a safer way. Also, bed rails are great. I'm not sure if uh, Alicia or Melissa talked about bed rails, but uh, we have a great example of a good bed rail um, in our clinic. I didn't bring today, but it slides right under, really handy for getting in and out of the bed. So, um, as we've been talking about all morning, prevention is what is key. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Really, both your physically, your body, and your brain to stay strong. Also, um, you know, really just paying attention as much as possible. I think a lot of falls happen because we get distracted. As an example, my girlfriend who fell on Christmas Eve, she was out chasing the dog, there was some snow, she distracted, boom, bang, down. And it happens just like that, right? Really easy. Look at making modifications. If you want to stay in your house, there's a lot of modifications out there. And with the smart technology especially, it's getting easier and easier. Well, thank you so much for coming today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.